In this video, I will give five reasons why an end user would consider choosing FreeBSD over Linux when their current system meets all their computing needs. Before we start, if this is your first time to the channel and you would like to learn more about FreeBSD and the journey to a better desktop and server, then please hit subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. The target audience of this video is not the command line keyboard tech that we all know and love, but the everyday man or woman who is looking for a system to get work done and browse the web, etc. with a sprinkling of multimedia consumption or creation thrown in. Making a list such as this isn't easy. Although there are differences between FreeBSD and Linux, to a potential new user there doesn't appear to be any, at least on a superficial level anyway. But here are my five reasons to choose FreeBSD for an end user. Unlike in the Linux world, there is only one OS bearing the name, FreeBSD. With Linux, there must be thousands of non-robust, half-completed, bad distros out there that are poorly maintained and barely work. But nearly all have the moniker Linux in the title. But beyond that, the variations can be huge. With FreeBSD, it is, and always will be, just one FreeBSD. FreeBSD is FreeBSD is FreeBSD. There are, of course, a few FreeBSD derived, and the word derived is not the same as distribution, OSs, mainly GhostBSD and NomadBSD. They are separate, not FreeBSD, but their own OS. In respect of Linux, there are hundreds of Linux distributions, and of course, Linux is purely the kernel, with the user land making up the rest of the OS. Each distro is made up of the same elements, with only minor changes differentiating between each, and in some cases, something as little as a theme change. The main differences between each core distro being the package management system, as in RPM, DEB, etc. FreeBSD consists of a kernel and all of the packages that are needed for a complete OS. This core OS is regarded as a complete OS in its own right and is managed by the FreeBSD project, as is the documentation, the help forums, and I'll look into these later. The majority of the core packages are actively developed by the project themselves and as a consequence, this leads to tighter integration and improved responsiveness for the system. And speaking of package management, the sheer mess that is present day Linux package management is a spectacle in itself. You've got Snap, Flatpak, App Images, all vying to win the evolutionary race to be the dominant package method, ignoring the very well developed and established incumbent methods. Snaps, in particular, has been a source of much contention, with Linux Mint not adopting this proprietary form of package management due to concerns of nefarious intent. In FreeBSD, you have one package management system and two ways to implement it. You've got PKG and ports, the former being pre-compiled and the latter requiring user compilation. There is no hidden agenda or competing standards, no egos to bruise or rights to beholden, just rounded and familiar and consistent ways to install the programs and applications you require. So, for the end user, to install something like Firefox, it is as simple as PKG install Firefox. Imagine you go to a friend's machine running a random Linux distro. It's Linux, so it should be the same as your own machine, right? Wrong. It uses a package management system you haven't used before. And the configuration files are all in varying places. It's a nightmare to use because each distro developer insists on using different conventions in directory structures. Why? Because each one thinks that their way is the true way, a better way. With FreeBSD, it's always the same. A FreeBSD 10 machine will be very familiar to someone who has used a 12.2 machine. In FreeBSD, things don't change for the sake of change. In Linux, packages are available from a bunch of different sources, some provided by the distro developers and others by third parties. Ubuntu and other distros have encountered issues with malware hidden in third-party apps, most notably from PPAs, that may provide software not yet in the official repos. There are a few Linux distros that use PPAs for their theming in order to achieve the desired look of Windows, an entirely frivolous use of a potential way to compromise your system, but it doesn't seem to stop them. It is not to say that PPAs are entirely a bad thing. It can 
be useful to get the latest version of a particular application, such as Wine, uh, as long as the PPA is from the official Wine developers. But the potential is there for a malicious link to infect your system with malware or spyware. In FreeBSD, all packages are provided by a centralized package and port system, with every package getting built as part of a single repository with security systems in place each step of the way. This ensures that a hacker can't sneak malicious code into a seemingly safe application and lends to the long-term stability of FreeBSD. Another aspect of trust is the trust in the FreeBSD project itself, a truly democratic structure that ensures that no seemingly arbitrary decisions are made that would essentially disrupt the development of FreeBSD. For example, to switch from Exorg to Mia, back to Exorg, and then contemplate a half-finished Wayland, or the inclusion of the much maligned System D, something that I hope will never come into FreeBSD. A mark of a great OS is how good any documentation is. And the FreeBSD documentation, otherwise known as the FreeBSD handbook, is amongst the best there is. Everything to do with FreeBSD is covered there, with examples, common problems and their solutions, as well as summaries of functions available to all levels of user. It is required reading and it's official too. This isn't a third party effort, of which there are quite a few good examples. This is put together under the watchful eye of the FreeBSD project as is the message forums. And this is what makes FreeBSD so good. It is, in its entirety, a complete OS, from the base to the managed user land, all the way to the documentation and official forums. Isn't that cool? So, if you invest yourself into the FreeBSD way of life, it will have all you need to learn and grow with an OS that at first sight may seem off-putting. But in reality, it doesn't constrict you into a particular or forced way of doing things. I'd like to also mention that a great third-party source of help is from a fellow by the name of Vermaiden. He has a fantastic blog that quite frankly should be attached to the official handbook itself. But anyway, the link to his blog page in the description box down below. If you haven't already, go and check him out. After this video, of course. One thing you will notice about FreeBSD when you use it for either a server or on the desktop is the performance. It is fast and very light on resources as well. FreeBSD uses the RAM on your machine in an optimized way. And a common mantra is that free memory is wasted memory, which means to the end user, things will be quick and snappy. Even when using a heavyweight desktop environment such as GNOME or KDE, FreeBSD isn't slouchy and is more than able to fulfill your everyday computing needs. And with port, you can tailor your system to match your needs from the initial install to the end. FreeBSD is very much a make it your own OS. Another thing is stability. And I mean this in the both senses of the word. FreeBSD has never crashed on me, never. And I push the OS every day. I recording videos, editing sound, graphics, office work, gaming, watching TV, etc, etc. And it's never given me any problems. The same can't be said on my wife's Windows laptop or the Linux machine I have to use when I'm out and about, where crashes and things not doing what they are meant to do is a common occurrence. So for me, and for many people who would make the transition to FreeBSD, or a FreeBSD-derived OS such as GhostBSD, things could not be better. For example, at the beginning of the lockdown in the UK, sometime in March, I, I can't remember, my kids had to do homeschooling. And even now, periodically they have weeks off uh, after their self-isolation turn comes around. And during this time, GhostBSD has been running on their desktops smoothly, perfectly, and doing everything it needs to. Microphones and everything else needed for remote schooling work just perfectly. The other stability is the one that comes from FreeBSD not changing because a new cool piece of technology such as Wayland, Mia, or SystemD comes around, attempting to replace technologies that work and work well. For FreeBSD, things change if they are needed to, not because they are fashionable. And because FreeBSD is a fully democratic organization, there isn't one dictator that pushes their own agenda and in the process breaks a perfectly working OS. And that's a fantastic feature. You can be sure that your long-term FreeBSD install will keep on working for as long as you need it. Again, on a personal level, even though I've installed security updates and version upgrades, I haven't had any system breaking issues. And there's no need for me to wipe and install a new version. The upgrade process has never let me down. So, stability is pretty much given, and that's is greatly valued.
Because FreeBSD hasn't been dumbed down to a point and click level, the user base exhibits more expertise, for want of a better word, and any problems you have are more likely to going to be answered there. The FreeBSD forums have questions and answers on almost anything FreeBSD related, and there are tutorials too with the authors who actually use the OS. And yes, there is this channel. Um, I will try and help when I can, and if I don't know the answer, I'll do the legwork and find out for you. There aren't many FreeBSD channels on uh, YouTube, mine being the biggest and the, perhaps the oldest FreeBSD dedicated channel, but there are others, and I'll link to one of my videos where I list the other channels. One criticism I have heard about the FreeBSD community is that it's populated with elitist types, and this is far from the truth. Via my YouTube channel, I have come to know hundreds if not thousands of FreeBSD users who I would have not had the chance to meet otherwise. They're not as numerous as Linux users, and um, and this is quite a revelation. They are a very closely knit group of individuals, and are always willing to help each other. Even the top developers aren't beyond helping end users with a problem, usually via Twitter, where a great deal of FreeBSD top brass can be found, not to mention IRC, but that's a whole different world. Well, this video hasn't been a reason to use FreeBSD for the technical crowd, but this is more of a reason, perhaps, why an end user would use FreeBSD. And I think I've answered the core reasons. Of course, if you disagree, then please leave a comment in the comment section down below. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.